everyone, and welcome to Good Morning Sunshine. I'm Carrie Pena alongside Brandon Lee, and we are so happy to welcome to the studio Sunny White, who is the co-founder and executive director of Mindfulness First. Thank you so much for being here, Sunny. Thank you for having me, Carrie. Previously, I've had you on my podcast, and I just love your mission. Uh, we have a lot to talk about in this segment, but first, if you could set the stage about what Mindfulness First is. Yeah, Mindfulness First is a 501c3 nonprofit. We're based in Scottsdale, Arizona. We've been around for about 10 years. We're about to turn 10 years old. And we serve schools, uh, mainly K-12 settings, with um, trauma education. So we train people in how to understand trauma and have a trauma-responsive environment. We train people in, and uh, children and teachers in mindfulness and mindful awareness, and then also social-emotional life skills. We believe that what we do is the missing piece in education. Uh, we think that PE has been around for 100 years, and where has mental health education been? So that's what we do. So talk about the effectiveness of your programs in the schools. And a lot of people still don't fully understand mindfulness. It's a popular topic, and it's Truly. a buzzword. But you know, really talk about what that means to you. What mindfulness means? Yeah. Um, so mindfulness is, it's, it's paying attention. It starts with, with that paying attention on purpose and without any judgment to what's happening right now in this moment. It's being here in this moment. And what we do is we have a series of 16 lessons that help us understand um, our senses, our, um, our emotions, our thoughts, our big feelings. What we do is spend lots and lots of time with those things until we know them so well that we can feel them before they even start. So for example, anger, if we spend a lot of time sitting with our anger and noticing all the sensations that are in the body that are associated with that feeling, you're gonna to start to see it before it even starts, which is gonna help you to regulate and for you to have better social emotional skills with other people around you. And this is all data driven. Mm -hmm. And you were having a lot of success mm -hmm. uh, here in Arizona. And I've read about uh, many mindfulness programs across the country. Unfortunately, you guys have had a big blow. You lost all of your funding. $430,000 in funding was, was shifted. And we don't get into you know politics and stuff on, the, on this show. That's not our purpose. But that, that has to be just devastating for you. This has been your life mission. Yes, it's devastating. We actually have been doing some really important work with the Department of Education to specifically mitigate post-pandemic trauma. So if you can imagine, as we were talking about just now, a child's brain grows and develops when they're very young and continues to develop till they're 25. And when a child has grown up during a global pandemic, when they've experienced fear, isolation, grief, um, home uh, insecurity, maybe economic insecurity overall, um, then the brain wired and the architecture of the brain changed to suit that situation. And so now we have lots of children who are struggling that, and they need that to be mitigated. And the government knew that because we have 30 years of, of uh, trauma research that shows us we know that that is true. And so we were very lucky. We got some funding from the Presidential Relief Fund that helped us to go into the schools. Last year, we served more kids than ever. We trained uh, uh, we trained over 3,000 Arizona teachers um, to have lifetime uh, access to our curriculums and training so they could do this for the rest of their career. But um, we were able to immediately impact children whose behaviors we were seeing firsthand on the ground that were a little bit strange, right? They were doing new things um, because they didn't know what to do with their big feelings. And we were helping with that. And uh, that grant was set to be um, run all the way through next year until next fall in 2024. And unfortunately, um, that funding has now been shifted to uh, tutoring programs so that uh, uh, the children can, in theory, get better grades. But what we know is those grades won't come unless their mental health is cared for. And what we also are gonna you know, see in the not too distant future is by not addressing these, need, these needs now, it's gonna have an impact even on our healthcare system. Why? Because the children who have been impacted by all of this and their wiring is off, you can tutor them all you want. But in about five or six years, all of that unprocessed trauma of the life that they've experienced at this early age, it's that event, that energy and that those behaviors will eventually surface. You will see more them numbing out with drugs and with alcohol. They will be in rehabilitation centers. They'll end up in the emergency room or detox centers. And so all that schooling, 
right? All that schooling that we threw at them is gonna be for naught because they're not gonna have the successes that they normally would have because their behaviors are gonna send them sideways. And what is your concern there, Sonny? I mean, you, you know, I, I feel for you because I, I know how hard you've worked to get to where you are and you saw some 2,300 students that you were interfacing with just over the last year, you had big plans. So, you know, what is your reaction to, you know, Brandon makes a great point that where does this, where does this leave us? Yeah, I'm, I am incredibly concerned about the whole thing. I'm and for the same reasons that Brandon is, because I can see the research. You can't really argue with it. No. We, we know, right? We know what's going to happen. We're going to see, um, the, the most fatal diseases, for example, that um, Americans experience, that's what the reality for our, this generation if we don't treat the trauma um, alongside addiction, alongside all sorts of other issues. And it's really sad for us to say this, but suicide is currently the leading cause of death for our children in Arizona. And that should be the headline news. That should be leading our decisions around funding, not not grades, the grades can come later because and they because they won't come, right? We just discussed that. We won't have the grades if we don't care for their mental health. So I'm very worried. We created Mindfulness First because I was seriously ill in 2009 and used these techniques to get better and realized this should have been taught to me as a child, but I had to hit the worst moment of my life to discover that. Right. And so the takeaway for me here is that we need to all keep learning about trauma. And I hope we're gonna continue to offer free complimentary uh, workshops so people can take them online and learn about childhood brain development, which is so important, but so misunderstood, and keep learning about trauma as well. So um, what I would encourage everyone to do is keep learning about the these core um, topic areas. And Sunny, where can people find out more about your mission? Um, you can visit us at mindfulnessfirst.org. Thank you very much. You can tell that we were supporters of mindfulness and what that could do to help children developmentally from a very young age. Yeah, it's something that we all have to focus on. If we really care about, you know, the well-being of our children, both now and, and where they grow up, every, and you know, when I say this, Every parent has a dream for their child, right? And it's usually to go to a great school and have a great career and do all of that. Um, but you have to be trauma informed. And you know, some some kids, you know, so be, you know, adults will be like, "Oh, my parents never hit me. I was never sexually abused. I wasn't." Okay, yeah, that's trauma, but that's not the trauma we're speaking of that throws off the wiring of the brain from zero to five. You know, it's the attachment trauma and lack thereof, which is what leads them down that path. Um, so I think we all care about, I think we start there. We all care about the well-being of our children. We all care about that. We all want them to succeed. We don't want children who are 12, 13 years old vaping tobacco and smoking marijuana and experimenting with psychedelics, DMT, all stuff that kids are doing now. We talk about fentanyl. We talk about kids, one pill can kill, right? We have all these campaigns about doing it. Those children will not experience to numb out if we heal from, and rewire their childhood trauma. So we all agree we don't want our kids to go down there. Okay, we agree there. The only way we get them to not experiment and do those things goes all the way back to what they're doing at Mindfulness First. Thank you, Brendan. Sunny, thank you so much for being here. We One really... day I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> I'm right there with you. He's <laughs> right passionate. <there. laughs> we don't want to restrain that passion. He cares. And thank you so much. We appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'm Carrie Pena alongside Brandon Lee. And this is Good Morning Sunshine.